It's hard to believe that it was just 22 years ago that the Helena Ice Arena first opened its doors to the capital city. Back then, it was called the Queen City Ice Palace, and with a new rink in central Montana came a new hockey team with it, a team that over a period of five seasons turned this city into a rabid hockey town. It's also hard for current fans of the Bighorns to understand just how much this city loved this game and the team that played here. Over the next two episodes, we go back to our heritage and reminisce with those who began it all so many years ago. Today, we invite you into our history as we go beyond the bench. places. In the mid-1990s, junior hockey looked very different than it does today. The flow, the finesse and speed of this generation's game of hockey is certainly exciting to watch. But back then, the game was different. It was tougher, brutal at times. To play in the juniors, they'd say, you better be ready to fight to stay there. Before the Mike Avon came to town and had the idea of building an ice rink and having a junior team here, um, he approached my company, which at that time was SMD Engineering, and asked if we would do the mechanical electrical designs on the building. And I said, we sure would. <clears throat> he presented his idea, and, and the idea of junior hockey having our own ice rink, I thought was huge for the community. I mean, I went from doing my engineering designs to giving the man well over $100,000 to build the place. And I became a stockholder in it, and I was extremely interested in the team part of it. The Queen City Ice Palace became home to one of the most feared teams in the Northwest. The Ice Pirates weren't just built for skill, they were built for toughness. We had eight guys over 200 pounds on our team, which was pretty unheard of, if you know what I mean. So like we, we weren't the, like Billings was very skilled, um, things like that. We weren't like the skilled team, we were the physical team. So we kind of had that reputation, I mean, that's, Scott was my coach then, and I mean, He's a cupcake compared to what he was back then, you know. So it was, it was pretty hard. No, it was hockey back then for us. So I mean, that's that's kind of if you want to call it, like he said, it was a cool thing. But yeah, I mean, it was we were the villains if you want to call it that. I mean, people didn't like to play us. It was usually we weren't goons by any stretch of imagination, but I think we played harder physically than any other team. You know, we weren't looking to to score seven goals and when we were looking to score two goals and win. And that hard-nosed, blue-collar nature of the club resonated with new fans of the sport that had never seen anything like it. And they showed up in droves to watch more of it. The fan base was phenomenal. We had six sellouts the first year. That's over 2,000 fans. The fire department was here to shut us down because we had, we had too many people in the building. Wow. And it, you know, it, was an, it was phenomenal. The, the noise level would make you deaf. I and mean, you could not hear when you went home that evening because the noise in this building was so intense. And we're warming up and I kind of, we're on the side of the glass there and I hear some banging on the, um, banging on the glass and I turn around and there's like three guys with their faces painted, their shirts are off and like one of them has like number 12, the other one says Richards and the other one says Rules or something else like that. And they were banging on it. And I mean, I think the game prior, I had just had a really good fight or something else like that. But I mean, but yeah, I mean, it was it was exciting. You know, you go out around town and it was small enough then and, you know, take take the girlfriend to, out to eat somewhere and someone picks up the check or or something like that. I mean, uh, you kind of, that was all, I, that was neat. 
you know what I mean? I guess it's the best way to describe this. It's just kind of one of those experiences like you, you're not going to get, you know, anywhere else. I think especially in Helena at the time, the enthusiasm was so high for hockey. So, But in early 2000, things began to change. And that change threatened the very existence of junior hockey in Helena. When Mike Avon started losing things, the place actually went into bankruptcy and was sold at auction at the courthouse steps. Um, I bought it at the courthouse steps because my name was on almost every loan, good, bad, or indifferent, that he ever got. And some of that was, you know, my doing, some of it was not. I mean, and uh, so I bought the place at the courthouse steps with the help of Mountain West Bank, and I changed the team from the Ice Pirates to the Gold Rush. So we actually operated for two years as the Helena Gold Rush. And that was strictly because I had no clue what debts Mike Avon had out there. There was so much stuff. You know, people accused me of not paying this, that, or the other thing. Had my own personal guarantee. And you start looking at the paperwork, it's not my signature. So um, it, it was kind of a two-year transition from ice fires to the gold rush to when the owner that owns it now stepped in. As new ownership took hold, so did the change in names. The Queen City Ice Palace became the Helena Ice Arena. The Helena Gold Rush were no longer in existence and instead, two teams were put in place by the new owners. The Queen City Cutthroats would be the Junior B squad in the Northern Pacific Hockey League, or NORPAC. And the new Helena Bighorns would compete in the American Frontier Hockey League, which became what we know of today as the North American Hockey League in 2003. Next time, we take you back to the time when junior hockey died in Montana. And we'll hear a few more stories from the old days, as well as take a look into the future as part two of this origin story continues on Beyond the Bench. <laughs>